Not all who wander are lost. But I sure as heck was. <laughs> Hi, my name is Haley Zega, and when I was six years old, 19 years ago, I was lost in the Ozark National Forest in the upper Buffalo wilderness for two and a half days by myself. And I'm gonna tell you that story. Before I get into it, I just wanna say, I'm not uncomfortable telling this story at all. I've told this story more times than any other in my entire life to the point that it annoys my friends when they have to hear it again. Um, when I tell it at parties or in coffee shops. Or... It's actually kind of amazing that I've never made a video kind of telling my story. It was a national news story and so right after it happened in there was like a Dateline episode and there was a book written about it and it kind of felt like everyone else had told my story and I didn't really need to tell it again. People have a lot of assumptions um, when they hear about it from like other sources. So I wanna kinda of clear some of that up. Uh, assumptions people have about me and how I have dealt with it. Assumptions that people have about things that happened out there. Um, and like I said, I've told this story so many times. I don't mind answering questions about it. People recently have found me on social media, which isn't hard to do. And I have a pretty unique last name, so and I don't mind. In fact, I'll put my like Instagram handle in the um, description. So I thought, you know, it's easier for me to tell the story like this than to try to type it out. So here we go. Let's start at the very beginning, I guess. Very good place to start because it's my story and I'm gonna tell it how I want to. Um, <laughs> I was born in Fayetteville, Arkansas and I for a while moved away and when I would tell people that they would kind of make this assumption that I was from a sort of tiny little town in the middle of farmland which isn't true. Fayetteville is a college town. Um, I think in the area now uh, there are more than half a million people so it's not you know, it's not a tiny little town where everybody knows everybody else, although everybody kind of knew me after this. My grandparents on my mom's side are wonderful people. They're very environmentally conscious and they wanted me to have an appreciation for nature and Arkansas truly has some of the most breathtaking natural vistas and forests in the country in my humble opinion. They thought I was too much of a city girl, so they decided to take me out on a hike in the Ozarks, about an hour and a half from where I was born. And like I said, I'm not from a really small town by any stretch of the imagination, but it does get really remote really quickly once you kind of leave the city of Fayetteville. Where I was lost is some of the most remote land between the Appalachians and the Rockies essentially. The hike that we went on is one of the most famous in the Ozarks. It's to a place called Whitaker Point also known as Hawksbill Craig and if you're ever in the Ozarks I highly recommend it. It's a beautiful hike but it's also a little bit treacherous. The trail itself is along some bluffs above the Buffalo National River and uh, the bluffs are about 200 feet tall so it it is pretty dangerous if you're not watching your step. The leaves are really dense, especially in the spring and summer, and it can be really easy to get off the trail. I've been back out there, I don't know, 50 times since this whole ordeal took place. And even though I've been out there so many times, I have easily gotten turned around and got myself off the trail with almost no effort. So I was I was hiking with my grandparents when I was only six so I got tired really easily and um, there was this waterfall. Side note and spoiler alert I guess the waterfall is now called Haley Falls after me which is kind of cool. So if you're ever out there and you walk past my waterfall you know say hey I guess. <laughs> And to get down to see the waterfall, you actually have to climb down a tree. And I was already feeling kind of cranky because it was a long hike and I'd never been out there before. And I just didn't, I was not as appreciative of the natural world as I am now. So I wanted to see this waterfall, but my grandparents knew that 
I was absolutely too young to be trying to climb down and then back up a tree to see a waterfall. And so they said no. And I was not having it. I was cranky. I was tired. I didn't want to be out there anymore. So I did that thing that little kids often do when they're being cantankerous. And I sat down on a rock on top of the waterfall. And I said, I'm not going to move until you carry me. But <laughs> this trail is narrow enough and in places treacherous enough that carrying a grumpy six-year-old was just not an option. They weren't going to be able to carry me out of these woods. So they did the thing where they sort of started walking away, like, we're going to leave you behind. And then, you know, the kid or I was supposed to follow them. And I tried to. I got up and I tried to follow them. But like I said, the trees at that time of year were in full foliage and it was so dense it was like a curtain had dropped between me and them and I couldn't see them and I couldn't hear them anymore and so in front of me there were there was a bank of trees and leading one way was the main trail and leading another way was what I thought would curve around the bank of trees it looked like another section of the trail and I thought it was going to curve around the bank of trees and meet up with the the main trail and that I would head them off meet them on the trail unfortunately that's not what happened and in a matter of seconds I was lost just completely and totally lost and so I just kept walking um I know now and if you're watching this and for some unknown reason are going to take survival advice from me here's one of the main things. If you're ever lost in the woods, don't keep moving. Sit down, stay there. It's much easier to find someone if they're not a moving target. But like I said, I was six years old, had never been in the woods before. I had no idea what I was doing. So I just kept walking and I thought that I was going the correct direction and eventually I would meet up with them. But I kept getting deeper and deeper into the woods and it became really clear really quickly that that just wasn't the case. So luckily I managed to get to the river, the Buffalo River, on the first day that I was missing. And I'll get more into kind of that whole thing at the end. So I formulated a new plan, which was follow the river, which will lead to a bridge, which will lead to a road, which will lead to a gas station where I can call my parents. And that was my plan for the next two days that I was out there. Um, I just kept walking along the river. I didn't drink anything and I didn't eat anything because I didn't think it was safe. So pretty quickly night started to fall. I had a couple of hours but so at this time I kind of decided that I needed to find somewhere to sleep and the search was in full swing as far as I know and <laughs> um, helicopters were flying overhead and I didn't know that they were looking for me but I, I thought that they might be or that it would be good if they saw me because they could rescue me and so I thought that for the best visibility I should sleep on a rock in the middle of the river. I found a rock. So for hours on that first day my goal was to get into onto the rock in the middle of the river um, so that they could see me and I kept falling in. I wasn't, a, I was six, I wasn't a terribly strong swimmer. Honestly it's a wonder I didn't drown. But I eventually made it to the rock and um, I could see the helicopters flying overhead, but they didn't see me, unfortunately. So the next day I woke up, if I even slept, I don't really know. I know I didn't dream about anything. I remember thinking maybe if I close my eyes and when I wake up, it'll all be a dream. Obviously it wasn't. So the next morning I got up and I got off the rock and I kept following the river. So that night I thought it might rain because of an old wives tale that my mom had told me about the way that the clouds look around the moon. So I found a cave near the river and I was never very far from the river while I was walking. I pretty much stayed within sight of it because it was kind of my lifeline. And occasionally I would go into the trees for some shade because it did get hot during the day 
but again I was never terribly far from the river so the third day I was again walking along the river and the whole time I was shouting my name my parents names their phone numbers anything any kind of information that I could think of that if someone heard me might help them or help me um, I was throwing sand in the air in the hopes that the helicopters would see me and they never did I've still never ridden in a helicopter and kind of disappointed about that but that's beside the point. Anyway, I was also getting really dehydrated at this point uh, and hungry and I started to hallucinate a little bit. I remember hallucinating a valley of flamingos among other things. So yeah, I was starting to get very weak and I sat down by the river at one point and was just kind of relaxing, hanging out and at that point um, a miracle happened. Two men on mules found me. Part of the reason that it was a miracle, among other things, was that they actually weren't with the official search party. I was miles and miles away from where they thought I was going to be. Um, when a child goes missing, they make models based on the age of the child and their personality and how familiar they are with the location, and that's where they tend on focusing their search and I blew all of the models out of the water. So these two men went up to the official search party and they said, we think that we know where she might be. They were salt of the earth, had grown up in Newton County, knew the woods like the back of their hand better than anyone. And the official searchers were like, thank you for your input, but that's pretty much impossible. You'd be wasting your time. We'd be wasting our resources if we went out there. And so they were turned away. Um, and they decided to go out on their own. And thank God they did, because I wouldn't be here if they hadn't. And they were the ones who found me. They found me by the river and they, I don't remember exactly what they said, but it was something along the lines of, are you Haley Zega? We've been looking for you. They gave me a Diet Coke and some chocolate pudding and they put me on one of the mules and they got me out of the woods. William Jeffel Lines and Lytle James are their names, and they are heroes. And I can say without hesitation that I would not be here telling you this story if it weren't for them. Sorry, I'm kind of losing my voice. This is weird. I haven't. It's coronavirus time, and I don't think I've spoken this much out loud for the past month. Um, <laughs> so, <clears throat> I guess that's the surface of the story that people have asked multiple times and is actually kind of relevant to the story is like so what were you wearing and I was wearing a Cape Canaveral NASA t-shirt I always wanted to be an astronaut when I was a little kid um, and it was gray and then I was wearing a pair of shorts and some tennis shoes I think one tabloid at one point reported I was wearing flip-flops which I mean I had never been out in the woods before but come on <laughs> so I went missing in late April and was found on May 1st and in Arkansas springtime can get really warm during the day, like hot even, but at night it's really cold, especially up in the mountains. And I was also soaking wet, so I was hot during the day, but freezing cold at night. And I had left a sweatshirt that I had brought with me in my grandparents' truck, actually, so that didn't really do me much good. <laughs> and um, this actually made it much harder for them to find me because I wasn't wearing bright colors. I was wearing muted, you know, things that blend in very well with rocks and trees and you know nature so um always wear bright colors when you're gonna go hiking in the woods something that people ask a lot is were you scared and honestly no <laughs> um it i was too young to really understand the gravity of the situation I, I think i was at the best and worst age i guess um because i was old enough that i had some kind of I formed a plan. I was old enough to form a plan, but um, too young to understand the gravity of the situation. I think if I had been any younger, I would have just sat down and cried. And if I had been any older, I probably would have known not to keep moving. So kind of exactly the right or exactly the wrong age. Um, something else that I get asked a lot is about Alicia. And so I guess I'll get into that now. From the moment that I knew I was lost um, until the moment I was found, 
I had an imaginary friend who was with me the entire time. And I was never a kid who had imaginary friends before that. And I haven't had any since. It's important for me not to define what she was. Um, some people say that she was a ghost. Some people say she was a guardian angel. I had someone message me on Facebook asking me if I thought she was an alien. <laughs> um, I've seen like, not Reddit, but like forums where people talk about what they think she was. <laughs> it's, I, okay, side note, I gotta say, it is bonkers to read people on the internet talking about my story, like, as if I'm not, I don't know, as if they don't ever expect that I'll read it, which they probably don't, and that's fine. Speculate away. But like I said, it's important for me not to define what she was. Um, she was a really calming presence. She actually helped me on the first day find my way, find the only safe way to get to the river. Um, like I said earlier, the where the trail was, where I was lost, was above the river on bluffs that are about 200 feet tall. And she helped me navigate down those bluffs. I somehow miraculously found the only way to get to the river safely. And it was because of this presence, this imaginary friend that I had. So I'm grateful to that imaginary friend. It's important for me not to define what she was. Um, I always called her an imaginary friend and that's what I'm always going to call her. Um, spirit, guardian angel, psychological phenomenon, what have you. She was with me, she kept me calm, she played games with me. She was there for me the entire time. Um, and if you want to hear more about this, I kind of talk more in detail about it on a podcast that I did an interview for about a year ago called The Grailian Report. And um, so shout out to them and to Micah and I will leave a link to that in the description if you want to hear more about this story. Um, if you want to hear more about this story, go ahead. But yeah, so that's Alicia and I'll always be grateful to whatever entity that was for keeping me company during that time. Um, another thing people seem to assume, and they don't really ask this as a question because I think it would be a little weird, but people assume that I'm like traumatized or disturbed or like emotionally stunted because of this experience. and. I just want to say that, like, please talk to me before you make that assumption. Um, also, I still love being out in the woods. I love hiking. I love camping. I love being on the river, canoeing, kayaking. It's something that I really love about my home state in particular is how naturally beautiful it is. Um, I guess part of me is like, well, besides dying, the worst thing that could happen to me in the woods has happened to me so why should I be scared um, with that being said of course there are precautions that I take now that I didn't take then um, so yeah um, if you have any more questions for me um, feel free to leave them in the comments and uh, or you can DM me on Instagram and I'll try to answer them if I get a lot I guess I could make another video um, <laughs> wild I'm not a YouTuber, so I don't have a fancy camera or lighting or anything like that. I'm just kind of doing this on my phone. Uh, and something I just want to say, something that I learned from this whole experience is the power of community. And this is something that my family and I have always taken away from this whole experience. My disappearance sparked the largest search and rescue mission in Arkansas history. That was mostly volunteers. People left their jobs, people left their families for those couple of days just to come out to the woods and look for a little girl that they didn't know. I mean, some of them did know me, my teachers and, you know, my 
friends parents and, and people but there were so many people that I never met and never probably will meet and I just want to say like thank you so much um, I've always thought that the way that I can repay those people is trying to live my life to the fullest and you know try to pay it forward as much as I can uh, and to the people who were there as search and rescue and law enforcement um, you guys are also I owe you a debt of gratitude that I'll never be able to repay and so I just want to say thank you so much from the bottom of my heart um, I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for that coordinated effort um, I could talk more about like the actual search and rescue mission I'm not really sure that I'm the authority to speak on that because I was the subject I wasn't actually part of the search and rescue but there is a book by Tim Ernst who uh, opened his home during the search as the base for the whole operation and he wrote a book about the whole ordeal afterwards so I think it's available on Amazon it's called the search for Haley it's by Tim Ernst if you want to check that out and I also want to give a shout out to the Morgan Nick Foundation they were there on the scene Colleen Nick was there on the scene with my parents while I was missing and they are an amazing organization that's based here in Arkansas that tirelessly works to find missing children um, and I will link them in the description as well so that you can check them out the Morgan Nick Foundation does truly incredible work so yeah I guess that's kind of it again you can find me on Instagram if you want to say hey give, leave a comment if you have a question that I didn't cover and yeah thanks for watching um, Stay safe, stay healthy.